What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Fear of a Flat Planet, presented by Toyota. I'm your host, two-time Paralympic snowboarder, John Leslie. And today I have joining us Mark Fawcett and Greg Picard from Canada Snowboard. How are you guys? Great, thanks. Yeah, pretty Greg, good yourself? You? I'm great, thank you. Just jo- enjoying another sunny day here in Whistler. It sounds like everyone's got some sun where they are. Greg, I yes. guess the sun's gone down, but you did yes. enjoy a sunny day. It's bringing in full effect now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it's full full winter. I'll make both of you jealous. It's full winter here in uh, in Banff at, up at Sunshine. Um, powder day today, minus four, and gorgeous. Um, cool. All right. So, Greg, you are the head coach of the Canadian Para Snowboard Team. You're also the owner of the club Elite Snowboarding based out of Bromont, Quebec. You're an ex-racer, a BMX badass, husband, father, and you juggle it all like a pro. What was your day like today? Where, where are you joining us from? Today, well, I'm back from Italy from a week. I'm on day seven right now, counting the days. Um, seven out of 14. Uh, I'm quarantining at home. Um, it was pretty good. Uh, had to play outside. It's like I've mentioned before, plus 20, sunny, uh, can play around. So yeah, pretty good day. I'm, uh, it gives me some time off that quarantine time. Yeah. Thanks for taking time to talk to us. Um, awesome. Mark. So Mark Fawcett, your two time Olympic snowboarder, you're a zookeeper at home. You've got birds, dogs, I feel like you have maybe even like goldfish or something. Uh, You're a husband, father, snowboard guide, shop owner, um, snowboard legend. Same questions to you. Uh, Where are you today? Um, What did you get up to? I was really missing uh, having Greg with me. So uh, (laughs) I was solo coaching uh, with our para team up here at Sunshine Village. And... um, yeah, establishing and, you know, setting in a, a training environment by yourself is um, something I haven't done in a few years. <laughs> so it was a lot of work, but uh, I got the team to pitch in and get involved and they were really new at that. So um, that was interesting. And yeah, just super fortunate to have, you know, full mid winter conditions and be able to um, snowboard every day for work. <laughs> so you had a work full on work day today, as I would describe it in terms of like, if you're a coach on a Canadian national team, like the best day you can have is on the snowy slopes, uh, I guess in Canada, like, so that's pretty sick. And that's in Banff, Sunshine, Canmore. You saw a little bit of everything today, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And the day's not done. We, you know, took a lot of video and, uh, we go through that in the evening. So I've been, I've had two little visits with, uh, with athletes and gone through their video and done a little meeting and then got two more after this and then hopefully have enough time to eat something before I go to bed. Wake up at 5.30 tomorrow morning to start it all over again. To go drill some holes and set some gates. Yeah, all for us. Well, we really, really appreciate it. And I guess on that note, all that hard work leads up to Greg, what you just experienced, you know, you, you kind of touched on it a little bit. Um, you just got back from Italy. Uh, you went to a world cup with Tyler Turner, one of, one of your athletes and a teammate of mine. What happened there? Was there some success? Yeah, it was, uh, it was casual. It was, uh, no, Uh, no, it was great. Um, super, unreal experience um we just showed up to italy last minute thing and it was really to see where tyler was at um with the training was his first event really um first world cup and then um you know first day qualified first um which was pretty unreal to see we were aiming for like i don't know we were probably around fourth 
third or fourth and then end up first. Um, some mistakes after that um, uh, le led to a seventh place that day and then just redemption on the next day and won gold. So that was a pretty amazing experience to, to see live and uh, experience. Yeah, that was yeah, good. Yeah, and I mean, obviously the podium is al always the goal, but as a coach, I'd say sometimes, you know, resilience, you know, an athlete qualified first, ends up in seventh. You guys probably had to work together really closely. And then, you know, to be able to come back from something like that and end up on the podium first, let alone the next day. Like I call that a very successful experience. So congratulations. That's so sick. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. All right. We're going to turn things over to Mark for a second here. Um, so Mark, you're currently in Banff. We got a little bit of a play on the weather. It sounds like it's snowy midwinter conditions, midwinter for us, minus four. I feel like for someone living in Calgary or Alberta, it's pretty mild, but yeah, I, I've been feeling those midwinter vibes for sure. Um, what's been kind of the training focus? Uh, how, how long have you guys been at this current camp for? So you're, you're sort of more of at a, a female girl. So we have We've interviewed the girls on the podcast, um, got some up and comers, all levels. This has been a really good year to sort of work more on the basics. And, you know, you guys have taken the opportunity to have more of a focus camp. What, what's that focus right now? What, what have you guys been training on? How long have you been there? Well, you've really nailed it uh, right on the head. You know, this is an opportunity year. Um, it's something we've never really seen. And as coaches, and even when I was an athlete, my coach used to say, oh my God, if we could take a year off, if we could take one winter off. And you said that to me before, for sure. Just train and get better. Like, holy geez. Cause going event to event to event, you don't snowboard as much as you think. You don't get to like, um, take risks and learn new and develop new skills. It's just sort of polishing what you have all winter long. And then if you, you have a really short amount of time to, to get better. So this winter has been an incredible opportunity and we've watched um, our whole gals team really step it up in all facets of their snowboarding. Um, everything from like how comfortable they are at speed to jumping, um, proximity training, you know, how, how it used to be in para, we didn't even race head to head and now we race four across, you know, full four across at a time. So that proximity um, comfort is really important. Um, right now we're working, we, I took this camp to move back a little bit more into those foundations, like you said, and we did a couple of days of like pure carving skills, full Euro carving and, um, and the conditions were great for it. And then over the next few days, we're jumping. It's going to be, it turns to jump camp and get the gals comfortable in the air. The park at Sunshine Village right now is outstanding. Uh, they have a lot of different options for progression. Um, and that's, yeah, that's what we've been doing. And having the whole crew of four gals has been really fun. They've, uh, they've been they're loving it. a riot when they're not yeah. busy getting sushi poisoning. They're, they're, they're going to get sushi right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, because like, they, that's because they know they'll jump tomorrow. Yeah, oh. yeah. They want the day off. <laughs> they want a day off. <laughs> that's yeah. hilarious I've had the opportunity to work with you guys and learn sort of the technical side of what makes a turn good and important and it's a lot more than just going from left to right when you set up a course you know the whole point is to generate speed down the course like how do you adapt that to the athletes do you do you change the gate set mark you know today like it, it does it go by how far the gates are set down is it more of a speech like the top is it the degree of the slope like you know what plays into being able to hone in on these features what 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 do you use in your toolbox on the hill i would say if i take this way back in history one of the first um world championships at soda springs snowboard world championships sorry at Soda Springs, circa 84, um, Tom Sims uh, was the course setter. Yeah. And he went up 
to this slope. It was all groomed. No one had been on it yet. He went up really early. He pulled out of the start. He rode down, do a nice GSS turns. He came back up and he placed the gates in the apex of every one of his turns. And that was the course. <laughs> and that sounds funny, but like, it's definitely um, one of the biggest tools I use is I look at like, where would I want to free ride right now? Where would okay. I want to be? Where would I want to be hammering a turn knowing that I have enough speed for another one? What's the terrain look like? We were in, um, we were on Tin Can Alley. You, I've trained there with you before. It's got all sorts of fun terrain and really banky. Up off Strawberry? Up off Wawa. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The one and, uh, the Strawberry, I believe. And so, and, and, but there's a lot of factors you have to take into consideration. Yesterday, the snow was like hero groomers. Because of that, I knew they could dig an edge in hard, push on it, make, you could make tight arcs comfortably all day long on the snow that we had yesterday. So the course looked like that. Today we got up there, they had groomed probably late, i.e. like, you know, five or six in the morning they groomed it. So the base was soft and it had snowed 12 centimeters on top of that. So it was soft. You're not gonna be able to do this. So I had to lengthen and straighten the whole track. And then today was like, all of a sudden it was like, okay, this is a, a different skill set. Today is like, how long can you make your turns? How soft of a touch can you have? The timing's even arguably more important today. You only get one shot at that start. If you double turn in this stuff, you're going to be moving backwards practically. So, um, yeah, so we definitely, I definitely adapt to terrain, snow conditions, and then for sure, um, the clientele that you're working with, you know, and uh, I'll obviously like when I set courses for the Alpine team on their hard boots. And I mean, like, that's like setting a track for a Formula One car, you know, um, just because of the equipment more than anything. And then as soon as you switch to soft boots, it's a different set. You can't can't get quite as much lateral movement back and forth you lose a little bit of power with the soft boots yeah it's cool too like what i took i mean a lot of that i understood for sure but man the visual side is was really cool for me is you know the fact that i'm sure both of you take some time to that's how you give us feedback you know what i mean is like you've taken some time to visualize what that should look like the importance of not being able to double turn based on the conditions of today. I didn't know that that much, you know, thought went into, you know, why, when you're standing out there, whether it's taking video or watching us in the moment, giving us feedback on the radio is like, that's what, that's the stuff you're looking for is, you know, there's a lot of care that goes into that. Like, how should this look when someone rides this slope, you know, and that takes years and years and years of experience to be able to like, um, you know, hone in on or gather that's sick cool um greg i'm gonna turn it over to you for a second um so i know this you make some serious sacrifices for our team and for snowboarding thank you um the one i'm thinking of uh and sorry both of you make a lot of sacrifices <laughs> for our team and for snowboarding um but more specifically greg this at the start of this year you drove your entire family out to banff in your car right yeah uh yeah. how is that change from us getting a forerunner does the forerunner now meet you in calgary are you able to jump on a cheap flight do you get that thing part-time how's it work yeah no we drove uh yeah we drove with the with the family out west um with the three kids and the dog in the car little trailer um you know, with this situation this year, I think it was uh, it was a good move to have a good volume, and you know, we we didn't have any event planned, so it was a, a good move to to go out west, and we started with that cam and panorama, and then um, and then it led to uh, another month in uh, in Canmore. So yeah, it was it was good for like leaving for two months. Um, and, you know, we didn't have anything here, uh, any attachment or, you know, so we just decided to go and being able to, to give you guys like two months of, uh, of training in a row. So, um, and pretty much everyone's from, 
the West Coast. So that was good. So you guys could, you know, go back on weekends at home or uh, or just take a, a week off. So we jump on the opportunity to uh, to travel with the kids and give them that experience and uh, those uh, those memories. So yeah, we just jumped on it and then they kept the they kept the car and yeah, Toyota just gave us a we had a Tacoma actually Ooh. and uh, oh yeah, don't tell big, me that big Tacoma. Um, and yeah, we were able to uh, just run the camp with that and yeah, amazing. We had a good time. That's sick. Well, we really appreciate it, Greg, that you did that. And, you know, I feel like I've said this one too many times this season about like being the general after the war. And I think you're going to really pat yourself on the back for that move, uh, you know, as an athlete, having those training environments so close to home, being able to stay within Canada during such a uncertain time with COVID and pandemic going on. And honestly, feeling like I've progressed so much with my riding and I've talked to the girls, I've talked to Tyler, everyone's feeling the same, you know, Mark, you touched on it with like, wouldn't it be amazing to get a year off and like, yeah, you know, centralizing sort of in that Pano Banff zone, like really worked out for us. So like, kudos, man, that was, that was sick. Um, awesome. Uh, Mark, I've had some time over the last almost eight years to uh, observe your interest in disabled snowboarding from a third party view. Um, but maybe before I share how I see it, can you share with us some of your challenges and thrills that come along with working in disabled sport? Or maybe even let's back up for a second. Tell us maybe a bit more of your background. I feel like we kind of jumped the gun here. Um, how about you tell us about maybe about your athletic career, you know, how you got into coaching and then, you know, more in the last eight years, you know, disabled snowboarding. I can hit you with those questions again, once we get up to speed. Yeah. So I, uh, I first saw snowboarding in a, an old ski movie, a Dick Barrymore movie. And uh, the character was Ted shred. And, and, and this was like an early eighties movie and it was uh, essentially a, a wooden board, might've been a Burton, had water ski bindings on it sideways. Oh. He still was using cream. the rope, still using the rope on the front. And um, I saw that and it looked like the most spectacular, sensational thing I'd ever seen in my life. And I was about <laughs> 11 years old when I saw it and on, on TV and we were at a ski resort. We were at Sugarloaf in Maine when I saw it on the, on the TV and I was like, whatever that is, I got to do that. And um, managed to get my hands on one. Of course, you know, the story, it's the same as everyone else's. Like you get really addicted to it. Back in the day, if you owned a snowboard, you competed on it. And uh, I was really fortunate to live close enough to New England that, you know, I, I got in there really at the forefront of snowboard competition. Um, I would have been considered a Grom then, you know, like, like 17, 18. Um, Are you a going Grom to the... when you're like learning a sport for the first time though? Well, I mean, there's some older, better people like... calling you a Grom. <laughs> like well, I was a, I was a Grom for a few years. Yeah. Um, and you know, I was like, yeah, but the second year of the world cup, I was on it. So I missed the first year of what they called the world cup. And by the second year I was on the world cup which was uh 90, 91. And uh, I was 19, you know, and I got third overall in it. Um, the overall was a big thing. So we, we raced, we did moguls, definitely did half pipe. I loved that aspect of snowboarding to do multiple disciplines on one device. I adored that. Um, I still do. Um, anyway, I had, you know, a 12 year run, mostly racing a couple Olympics, um, ranked number one, a bunch, won 14 world cups, got on the world cup podium about 45 times. So, I guess. so you did 12 years of competitive snowboarding. Yeah. And then you, so and yeah. then I, did, and then I, I did a couple of years of guiding and doing a TV, um, t hosting a television show, a snowboard. Yeah. Did you settle in Nelson at that point? Is that when you I settled? Me? Yeah. So, yeah. And then. I was in Nelson just for a few years guiding when I got the call from Canada snowboard. They're like, Hey, like JC says, you're the guy, come back and coach. And that would have been around 2000, 
2004, five, more 2005, um, okay. pretty much on the eve of the 2006 games. Didn't have that much time to prepare that crew for 2006. And uh, I told and my Trino? wife, was that Trino? Trino. Yeah. Hmm. And I told my wife, like, I'm just going to help JC out for a year and then I'll go back to doing the TV show and guiding or whatever. But I got kind of addicted to it. We had a, a really good young crew that I identified like that spring even. And I'm like, Shelly, my wife, I'm like, I think I got to go through, take this through 2010. Yeah. And, um, and we did. And, you know, and, and uh, we had three guys going in to the Olympics with uh, a victory each on the World Cup that from that year. Um, we were actually undefeated that year in, in the Olympic discipline. Uh, probably about 2012 or so, I remember uh, being at an event where at Lake Louise, where you guys had a pair of World Cup, one of your first ones, I, I believe. I wonder if it was my, in 2011 was my first one. I wonder if you were at my first, I wonder if I met you, 2011. Yeah. I was, I was at Lake Louise for it. Crazy. I was there. For it. I would have yeah. been probably 50 pounds heavier. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I met I met Tyler there for sure. We did some we did a couple laps. Oh, Tyler Moser. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. And D um, Dustin was there. The whole crew was there. Yeah. Our high performance director at the time. I'm like, that's something I have interest in. That's something I have interest in. Yeah. Um, and excuse me. Uh, I had a lot of interest in it. Um, mainly, like it's a it's a puzzle. You know, yeah. like. It's and it's so individual, and um, I just looked at it, and you know, even just doing those couple runs with Tyler, I was like, oh yeah, oh we could do this and we could do that, and I'm a, I'm a total equipment freak, so I'm like, right away, I'm like, let's dial the equipment in so you can even start getting towards you know uh, a, a new level, um, and yeah, and then the, and then it came up, and uh, August 2014 was my first time with para greg now i'm going to shine the spotlight on you for a second how did you end up coaching the canadian national para snowboard team um take well, us through your I, career you know how you started yeah. snowboarding uh yeah i started snowboarding here at shefford which is now closed closed in like 2006 but it was the most amazing hill uh in the area and yeah, just grew up on the hill. We, we kind of had the hill for ourselves, like just taking a shovel, build a jump wherever we want. Uh, and yeah, and just like going up the hill at 5 a.m. with GT Snow Racer, had the first lap on it. That was my, uh, yeah, that, that was like how I started snowboarding for like, yeah, that was every weekend for the first 10 years I was snowboarding. And then um, started to race border cross um because it was pretty much what we were doing just like riding in the glades and dropping cliffs uh time in the park so were you bmx racing at the time too yeah i was i was already racing for oh, so you knew like about rollers years. you had rollers down so i already had that and and riding with seven others by your side so riding with four only was three. Easy. yeah four was easy um have the field was already off um but yeah it was uh that's how it started and then when i uh end up racing it just the next year i started coaching in uh quebec city and for like two years and moved back to bromont and uh started my own club here and so yeah next year will be the 10th year of the club and um and yeah, we, I just saw that uh, job opportunity at Canada Snowboard three years ago. I applied. We were kind of a, in the low with the club where uh, we had a lot of grassroots and stuff, but not much older athletes. So it wouldn't be like a full-time job. And just saw that, um, saw that posting on Canada Snowboard and applied and got the job. And like it, Mark said, like it's, it's a puzzle and I, I love it. It's uh, it's pretty much what I like the most. Like every day is a different day, and there's yeah, there's not a day that it's the same as the other. So, yeah, I love it. Getting close to the end of things here, guys. Um, 
I'm going to turn it over to Mark for a second. You were talking a little bit, Mark, earlier. You're saying you're a bit of a geek, a geek on equipment, and you really like to dive in on that stuff. Uh, we talked about it more specifically for disabled snowboarding, but you own a snowboard shop, and it sounds like you guys are doing a podcast. Um, you want to tell me a little bit about that? What's it called? What, where can people find that? What are you guys talking about on the podcast? Yeah, so it's a uh, it's actually a YouTube channel. YouTube and, channel. Uh, it's Tribute Board Shop or the Tribute Lounge. And we, uh, at the moment, are just doing equipment reviews, mostly boards, boots, bindings, hard, hard goods in general. Um, and we'll probably start branching out into doing more of like a traditional mini snowboard series of everything from how to to, you know, destinations, uh, et cetera. And it's a fun little side hustle. You know, and yeah. for me, for me, really, I'm, I'm the host more for the um, equipment reviews. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's been pretty fun. And, and uh, we did so a couple wants to find out the latest oh, review on how to ride so a Mer Capita Mercury. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So we just did like, you know, we've done like the Burton leaderboard split board. Uh, we just did the Mega Merc, the Capita Mega Merc. We've done some union bindings. If you go to um, go to YouTube and just search out Tribute Board Shop, everything will pop up right there. Um, Greg, uh, same-ish question, different um, dialogue. Elite Snowboarding, that's your club based out of Bromont. People want to find that. They just like go to your website. Yeah, they can go on uh, elitesnowboard.com or find us on Facebook. So well, I, yeah, yeah, I get your Facebook. That would probably be more of the spot, eh? So yeah, I, we're yeah, we're not too much into website. So yeah, go to the Facebook. Be, go to the Facebook. Yeah, so if you're in the Quebec area and you're listening and you're uh, interested in getting into uh, snowboarding, you have just heard about uh, how much exciting things are happening in Bromont. So get in touch with Greg and Elite Snowboarding um, and the Para Team. We have a Instagram account now. Maybe sure fill people do. in because I don't know what it's called. What what's it? What's the official name of it? It's a uh, Canada Snowboard No Canada Paris Snowboard Team. Cool. Well, I feel like, yeah. I, I got one thing that I should have should have touched on when we were talking about um, things that excite you about Para or you know working with Para Snowboard sure. and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, it, and it probably Luke should be almost placed back in when I sort of said to our high performance director, I want to get involved with that. And what I noticed right away, and it was just the most incredible thing. If you take away that a snowboard is designed optimally from powder, probably the next best thing a snowboard is designed for is to bridge um, an impaired leg to a non-impaired or an impaired side to a non-impaired side yeah. um, for someone. Like it is an ultimate, uh, adaptive or disabled device that to take someone from disabled to enabled yeah like a, it's like a walking stick for walking it, almost it's it's better than that yeah it's, I, I think it's better than that i mean I've, what we watch people you walk quite well and such but some people really struggle walking whether it's prosthetics or some some other sort of uh, disability and they jump on the snowboard and it's erased it's gone and uh I find it miraculous. And I, I, I wanted to tell, like, you know, I was good friends with Tom Sims. I never got to chat with him about this. Never got to really chat with Jake about it. Yeah. You know, maybe I'll talk with Dimitri about it or something. Uh, but, but it's really incredible how amazing this device. It's like it was designed for Parasport. No, that's, I'm really glad that you touched on that because that's something that I often forget um just being so close to it and growing up in it it's a it's a good life we live despite all the you know all the all the crazy things that are happening in the world these days so you know uh on that note i super appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy schedules um to talk with me and you know share your side of the story with our audience uh yeah i hope i, I hope you have a great rest of your day um Thank you very much to our partners, Toyota, and we will catch you guys next time on Fear of Flat Planet.